Alright guys, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard and I'm going to be doing another premium deck profile for Royal Paladin. Yeah! So basically this is just going to be the same deck, but it's just faster and better in my opinion. So this is also just taking lists from recent ARG tournaments that, uh, that they post on their website. So yeah, well, I'm just going to talk, go right into it. So the starter for this premium deck is Elrond. So right away, I'm going to address one specific person that mentioned that they said that if they don't see a list that doesn't run Barkle, they think it's bad. Uh, while I love Barkle, and I really wish that Barkle was the more optical start, op, optimal, sorry, the more optimal starter to run, I honestly think Elrond is just so much better, and it saddens me because of how much more consistent this card is. So while... Being, having to ride Blaster Blade does help with Alfred early. The deck itself requires you to call so many different grade 2s for certain pieces at certain times that Elrond helps you with those, those conditions. So Elrond's skill, if you don't know it, is Forerunner, of course. And its skill is Act, Counter Boss 1, put this into the soul. If you have an Alfred Vanguard, search your deck for up to one grade 2 or less that's not named this card and call it to rear. So it lets you call any grade two or lower card from your deck by shove to soul counterblast one, which you'll see there are a lot of targets in this deck that you'll want to hit, which makes this card so good. So Elrond is going to be my starter for this. And also unlike Barkle, you don't neg triggers, which is nice. So of course, because it is an Alfred premium deck, we are running four copies of Kingdom Knights Alfred. King of Knights Alfred's skill is you can kind of blast one once per turn, search for a blaster blade, call it to rear, give the blaster blade 5k, and then shuffle your deck. Passively, it also gains another 10,000 power if you have a blaster blade in your rear guard circle for the turn. So becomes a 23k by itself from its own skill if you don't use any other skills to search it out, aka Tarna. Next is three copies of Alfred early, not four. It would be four uh, if it weren't for my spicy tech. So Alfred Early's skill is when it's placed on Vanguard Circle, you counter blast one, uh, choose a blaster blade from your soul or your hand, call it to rear. Uh, it gains 10,000 power, and if you called it, draw a card from your deck. So basically, you're going to be writing this first if you have blaster blade and soul. Uh, search out the blaster blade in your soul, give it 10k, you're going to be using Elrond's skill to move to soul. You're going to search out Tarna and then keep it going from there. This is all like going first. This deck is, you want to be going first with this deck. It's pretty insane. So three copies of Alfred Early. And for the last grade three, it is one copy of Solitary Knight Gansalot, which is just beautiful. And it's SP. I, I love this card so much. So Gansalot's skill, if you don't know, yes, that is a 9k grade 3. If, you're, if you've never seen that before, there might be someone who hasn't seen that. Uh, the skill, the first skill doesn't matter, but I'll read it anyways. It's Van Counter Blast 2. If you have Blast Ability in your soul, this gets 5k and a crit. We're never going to be using that skill, ever. The other skill is Act Hand. So when this is in your hand, reveal this card to your opponent, uh, put this on top of your deck, and then search... For one copy of Bla for one card named Blaster Blade, reveal it to your opponent, put it in your hand. So this is essentially a fifth copy of Blaster Blade, if you will, kinda. You're just if you if you have everything except Blaster Blade in your hand and you want to fish out Blaster Blade really easily, you can do so. Also, if you're doing your opening hand and you got a Grade One and Alfred and some other Grade Twos, you're like, you know what? Gansalot's in my hand. That's essentially Blaster Blade. I can go ride my Grade One. Gansalot skill, reveal it, search my deck for Blaster Blade, boom, got my ride target. So, I love it. I just love how I can run Gansalot in this deck, in the main deck. It's, I love this tech. Thank you to that one ARG list that was one running Gansalot and gave me the idea for doing so. I love Gan Gansalot is probably one of my favorite cards in this game, if you guys don't know that already. So, Four copies of Blaster Blade because the deck completely revolves around this card. This card's your win condition, this card's your search target, this card's everything about the deck. Um, it's an Alfred deck because the, all the whole support of the deck revolves around Alfred, but Alfred himself revolves around Blaster Blade for the win condition. So, four copies of Blaster Blade, please. 
And then because we're going super aggro, we're still running four copies of uh, Undulatory Sage Tarna. Tarna's skill is when it's placed on rear. It doesn't say from hand or anything, so you can just call it from deck if you want. Um, if you have a grade 3 Vanguard with Alfred in its name, you search your deck for another card with Alfred in its name, write it, and it gets 5k. So when you write it, you get another Force Marker. You just stack the Force Markers on Blaster Blade because it's going to be swinging for if they already got 10k from Alfred early. Uh, give it a Force Marker, it's 30k. Give it another Force Marker, 40k. Swings for 40k. We stand up with flow goals. You kind of get the idea. Next, we are running four copies of Swordsman of Light, Blaster Javelin LaRouche. This card is what really, really makes the deck super consistent. So this thing searches out your main targets for like your boosters and your counter charge engine because we are running Pack Goal in the deck for counter charge and we're running Floral Pod and Flow Goal uh, to make Blaster Blade restand. So this target one and then target two for counter charge to replenish the counter blast that you use for Flow Goal and also for Alfred skills. So, you definitely want to see LaRouche a lot. Um, his, skill, his skill only works if you have a great, if you have a Vanguard with Alfred's name, so you do have to wait to get to grade 3 to use the skill. But the fact that it's, you can, it's not GB restricted, which is nice, you can do it when your opponent's at grade 2. If you go first, the minute you ride, ride to grade 3, you could search it out with Elrond. Again, Elrond being a really good card. You can search this out with Elrond. Um, use this skill, you put two cards from your hand to the soul and search your deck for two high beasts, call them to rear, and then if you call it two flow goals, your blaster blade, which was at 40k or 30k, is going to be swinging three times, basically, because of the two flow goals that you called out for the turn. So, blaster javelin roosh is a really, really good card. So, we are running 13 grade twos. The last copy is one copy of Conjure Mithril. This is essentially like uh, if you're missing one specific grade 2 for your combo, because, you know, you can only use Elrond's skill once, so the whole thing is, like, you go Alfred, pull out Blaster Blade. Then you can do, if you have either Tarna or Javelin in hand, you can do Tarna from hand, and then we do another Alfred, and then use Elrond to fish out the Javelin, and then vice versa. If you have Javelin in hand, you can use Elrond to fish out Tarna, and then call Javelin for hand. Well, if you're missing both... If you're missing both Tarna and Javelin in your hand, and you have Conjure or Mithril, you can use its skill to search for either one for your combo. So its skill is when it's placed on, if it's when it's placed from hand, you can plus one, soul less one, search your deck for up to one grade two, call it to rear and shuffle your deck. The reason I'm running this instead of Starhub Trumpeter is because Starhub Trumpeter is GB restricted, and because this deck likes to go first and rush your opponent while they're at grade two, so they can't use G Guardians. Um, being able to pull out stuff without GB restricted skills is really helpful. So, uh, one copy of Mithril just because it's like the one tech to help you find this specific grade two you're looking for. Get your combo off. All right, we're done with grade twos. On to the grade ones. We're running four stride fodder. So you know when it's in your hand, you pay the cost of stride. You can discard it to stride. Striding is really important in premium just because G units exist. So you want to be able to stride. And also, just because you're going to be using Tarna skill, you're going to be pulling out the grade 3s from your deck. You'll see less grade 3s for stride cost, so seeing more Sicilis is helpful to pay cost for stride. We're running four copies of Pack Goal because we want to counter, tar counter charge. I can't speak today. We want to be able to counter charge consistently. And for the most part, you're going to be pulling one out from Javelin skill. So if you got one in hand, uh, one in your damage zone, whatever, like, you, these things might go missing, and you're not going to use Javelin skill once during the whole game. You might use it three times for all you know. So you go Javelin for the early game, a pack goal, maybe another flow goal, counter blasts, cool. You just used up two counter blasts for the turn. Next turn, call out LaRouche again, pull out another pack goal. So you want to have pack goals, so I'm running four because you want to see this card so much, that the whole, like, oh, it's only 5k base, it doesn't matter because Blaster Blade is the one that's going to be swinging for the most part every single turn. So this is for consistency, repaying costs. It's searchable. It's searchable with Elrond, too, so if you just want to search Pack Goal, you can do that. 
And it's your target for the. It's one of your targets for Larouche. Uh, rest of my green ones. We're only running two copies of Lien. This is the Maiden of Divine Spring Lien, so its skill is uh, when it's placed on guard, if you have a. Choose one of your grade three units with Blaster or Alfred, and when if it's being attacked, uh, it can't be hit. So instead of uh, discarding one, you Soul Blast one instead, so it saves you hand. Really good card, obviously. It's been, it was in the Blaster meta like during like GBT, what, 11, maybe a little bit of 12, something like that. And the reason I'm only running two is because uh, I want to have a lot of grade twos because those are the main focus of the deck. The grade ones uh, are searchable, so they kind of like thin themselves out, So, but I don't really want to fill the deck with the grade ones to take up spot. So I'm just using uh, my ring to sentinel spots for the draw trigger PG. So, and then for my last two grade ones, two copies of Wingle. So I'm choosing Wingle instead of doing uh, Lien's just because a uh, Wingle is a high beast. You can search it out with LaRouche. And my favorite thing about this is because the skill of Wingle states when Blaster Blade is in the same column. So yeah, Wingle skills continuous during your turn, all of your blood units named Blaster Blade in the same column as this unit uh, or yeah, in the same column as this unit get 5k. So because you're going to be using Floral Pout and Flogel if this is the same column, this just gets a free 5k. So you can go Swing for, let's say you got three force markers underneath this. So this is, it would be 40k by itself, but because of Wingle, it's 45. So that extra five can make a difference uh, swinging against your, your opponent. So Floor Paladin, swing for another 45. Floor Paladin, swing for another 45. If you got another one, restand, and then you can swing for the whole whammy. But the whole, the free 5k is nice. So how you can do it is like, if you're going to pull out your Floral Paladin Flogels, like to your rear guard circles, and then you use... Javelin to pull out the one pack goal, and you can put pack goal over here. You can then call Wingle from hand, or you can call Wingle from another, or however way you want to pull out Wingle, if you got it, you can just call it over pack goal and then just give Blast Blade an extra 5k, which can make a difference for how you're going to win that turn or not. So I think Wingle is really important. The fact that it's also a high beast just makes it even better, so it's another search target for LaRouche. This deck just has a lot of consistency, and I love it a lot. So that was it for the grade ones, only 12 grade ones. On to triggers, uh, we're running four, copy, uh, four copies of Flogel and two copies of Epona. So the weighted triggers, the triggers that give you 10k, really really good. And then uh, four copies of Floral Paladin and Flogel, because you want to be able to see, this is your win condition as well. You want to see these more often if they get damaged, you have three more to work with. You're going to be probably pulling out two at a time, and you're going to call extras from hand. So seeing this card is really important. Definitely want to be running four of it in a premium Royal Paladin deck revolving around Blaster Blade. So that's it for the crits. So we are running ten crits because you want to stack those crits on Blaster Blade so it can swing repetitively, give your opponent pressure so they don't want it to hit. Two copies of Flash Shield Assault. I'm really comfortable with my Sentinel lineup being the... To Isolt, to Lien, just because uh, draw triggers are nice. It's a draw trigger with a skill, it's a PG, and uh, my grade ones, I want to keep them kind of limited to where they are at 12, so I do feel really comfortable with this lineup. If you do want to up Lien to 4 and take out Wingle completely, you can do that, that works fine, and then turn these into crits, that works too, but I'm just really comfortable with this, and I love how Wingle's help in the deck, so uh, I'm doing to the draw, PG, and to Lien. And finally, I'm just running four copies of You Just Still Made in Elaine. You can do, I've seen people, they do two of this and two of the Remedy Angel. The reason I like, the reason I don't feel Remedy Angel is really that neat is because the whole reason I would want run Remedy Angel would be for Counter Charge. But because I'm running four copies of Pack Goal, I have enough Counter Charge as it is. So I'd rather keep triggers that gain the 10k, whereas Remedy Angel gives you 5k. Weighted triggers are better, essentially, in my opinion. So, but if you're running a premium deck that doesn't have as much access to counter charging, you might want to be running uh, the old triggers. I guess it's up to you. On to the G zone. G zone's changed a bit since the last time too. So we're running two copies of Gansalot Peace Saver. Everyone knows this is a great card. It's when it swings, you get quad drive for free. If you have an Alfred or Blaster Vanguard, you get to counter charge, which is f fair. <laughs> Swing, get a counter charge, helps you with your flogels, the prepaid cost. 
And when it's face up in the G zone, your blaster blade during your turn has resist. That, that's the really important part of this card too. So you can do this first swing and when it's face up in the G zone for the rest of the game, during your turn your blaster blades have resist so they can't be denial griffoned or hetero around, etc. Two copies of Alfred Holy Saver. I don't really go into this a lot, um, just in the premium games that I play with friends. Um, the skill is once a turn, GB2, flip a copy of itself face up, so you're only using the skill once. Uh, choose, a co choose a card with boss blade in its name, it gets 3k and twin drive. So that's kind of like if I just like have the counter blast, the field set up, more drive triggers, more drive checks to get crits to put on blaster blade for the turn. It's available, so I want to run, run it. I'm running two copies of Holy Squire Dragon. This card's main purpose is for Link Joker, but uh, I might, I'm might. i probably going to be getting more copies in the future if I do plan to keep playing Premium, as we do have Link Joker support confirmed in the future. So Premium Link Joker could be anything at this point. We don't really know what it's going to be, but so having access to unlocking in the future would be nice. The skill now is mostly for a big Vanguard beater. It gives your whole field an extra 2k, and uh, so that can help with numbers with blaster blades swinging if your opponent has like an 11k base. Uh, I don't really go into this that often, but I do run it if I for every reason play against a Link Joker deck without any uh, uh, V-series support, just because um, locking down my front row is kind of annoying, so if I want to push for the game, win that turn, uh, Holy Squire Dragon is, is a card I have. So another big change is I am running two copies of Blazing Sword Fetus. And for the most part, it's because this might be the first stride that I go into instead of Gantzlot. So if I'm playing against a Kagero or Gear Chronicle deck that's kind of somewhat control variant, I guess you can say, if if I go into uh, Peace Saver first, uh, my Blaster Blade is still able to be targeted by Header Around a Denial Griffin. If I go into Fetus first stride, I use Fetus' skill to flip up Gansel lot, and then I use Fetus' skill to search out my grade 2s, so LaRouche or Blaster Blade itself. Most of the time I'm going to be using it for LaRouche. Use LaRouche, call out the two Floral Pout and Flogals, and because I have Gansel lot face up now, Blaster Blade has the resistibility during my turn, and it can't be retired by Denial Griffin, and it can't be sent back to the deck by Hetero Round. So uh, Fetus does help with that. I am running two copies of Fetus because... Um, if I do go into it other than my first stride, I can flip over the other copy of Fetus. Um, you know, the GB3 will be active, give two units on my field 5k, and my opponent retires something. So I can retire Interceptor, I can give Blaster Blade an extra 5k, I can maybe give LaRouche an extra 5k, or maybe the booster behind Blaster Blade if it's not uh, Flogal 5k, who knows. So that's really nice, the fact that you can retire opponent's rear guard and give your units 5k helps... Uh, beef up for numbers for the whole like swing of blaster blade repeatedly turn uh, Two copies of arrow divine knight alt mile essentially the same thing except if I don't really want to use the retire I can just uh, Use that skill flip it search for a grade two uh, The unit called gets 5k and my front row gets 3k for the turn So it helps with numbers helps thin out your deck for a specific grade two uh, most of the time it's gonna be LaRouche so Yeah uh, Alt Mile is just a really, really good card. Free free plus if you go into it your second stride. Uh, one copy of Ultima, just because it's really funny. Uh, if I can pay the cost, it's the same thing as like the rest of the deck. You place it, search out for the exact cards you need for your combo, you put two crits on the top of your deck, and then your whole field gets the trigger powers. This is also just really great just because Ultima, now that we have triggers that give 10,000 instead of 5,000, the columns get twice as big as they used to be before V-Series. So Ultima skill is you have to discard a copy of the same name. You have to have three cards face up in your G-Zone. You have to discard the same name as your Vanguard from your hand. And when you stride into it, Counter Blast 2 on place. Search your card, search up to four cards, put two of them on the field, rear guard circles. The other two go on the top of your deck. And for the rest of the turn, uh, when you drive check a trigger, you, all your units receive the trigger effects. So you're guaranteed to get your crits, obviously. Uh, your Blaster Blade's going to be having three crits by itself. So, and if you have claw two more Flogals, it's, you know, if your opponent's at three damage, you go, okay, swing a Blaster Blade for 45, whatever, 40k, 
three crit and they block it. Swing again for the... They have to keep blocking it because you're going to be attacking with this repeatedly with all those crits. So Ultima, really good card. Uh, Albus Avalon, literally the exact same thing. I'm not going to explain it again. But Avalon's skill is when it attacks uh, Generation Break Gate, you can have us one, search your deck for up to five cards, uh, call them to separate rear, and they gain 4k for the turn, and this unit gains a crit. So you swing, search for the exact combo pieces you need for Blaster Blade, Flow Goal, etc. Get your Counter Blast Black with Pack Goal, win with GB8. So that's for the main G units under the G Guardians. Uh, I'm running one copy of Maskell. Uh, helps you get to GB8, helps you get to GB3 for um, Ultima if needed. It's essentially Laser Guard Dragon, but better. Two copies of uh, Little Great Sage Marin. This is for if you don't have cards in your front row to guard with for Maskell's shield effect. You use Marin, you Soul Blast 1 if you have a Blaster or Alfred Vanguard. You search your deck for a grade 2 or grade, grade 1 or greater card, sorry, I was about to say grade 2 or less. It is grade 1 or greater card, search your deck, call it to Guardian Circle, and the unit called gets an extra 5k shield. So the most part, it's another reason why I'm running Wingle, is because if I call, my Wingle is going to be my target, because unlike uh, my Sisalus and my Pack Goals, who only have 5k shield, uh, the new Wingle has 10k shield, meaning that if I guard with it, the column is going to be 43k base, counting my Vanguard's base. So it'll be a bigger shield, it's a search target. Wingle doesn't really do too much to the deck uh, as far as filling up for the combo, so I can deck thin, pull it out for shield. Still really good card to run, Marin's great. And then lastly I run Dismal. Uh, Dismal is usually gonna be the flip target for Maskell, but if I'm playing against a deck that's gonna be, if I know people are gonna be trying to hit Blaster Blade, or trying to retire Blaster Blade, or just do anything to Blaster Blade for the turn. I can play Dismal, target Blaster Blade, can't be hit for the rest of the turn, and then it stays on the board, and I don't have to worry about finding another Blaster Blade for the rest of the game. That's basically it for the deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm having a lot of fun with this deck. Um, not that many premium events going on in my locals. Um, if I do go to Carrot Expo for whatever reason, uh, if I don't enter for the Buddy Fight event because I don't have a buddy fight ace deck or a meta buddy fight deck to play at the moment um i'll probably enter in the premium tournament with this deck or probably with psi uh the psi qualia booster updates with cards added to that as well if exculpate is any good i'm having fun with the deck i think it's a lot of fun especially if you go first that's all i really have to say that's it guys see you all next time